is the Sitam Worship Service. Welcome to the Sitam Broadcast Service, CBS. Thank you so much for joining us on Sitam Broadcast Service, our family service today. We're dealing with, in this month of October, the overriding theme of responding to God. And today our focus is really on the Word of God, the Bible. And uh, I'm so delighted to have our speaker for the day. He's going to give us a few insights just as we prepare for the service. Um, this is Reverend Kenny Sige. He's the Deputy Regional Overseer for the Northern Region of CETAM. Now, a lot of people look at the Bible. It's, uh, it's basically an old book. It's a strange book. Um, but why should we still take it seriously after these many, many years of its writing? Well, thank you, Reverend Kwame. Uh, the Bible is uh, God's word mm. to us. The scriptures tell us that uh, it, God inspired or breathed yes. the words of the scripture so that all the scripture and all the words of the scripture are inspired mm. and they are relevant for us. Mm. It has benefit or profit for us mm. for so many things in our lives. Okay. Bible tells us what's right. Yes. Uh, it tells us what's wrong. Bible tells us how to be right with God. The Bible also helps us keep on track, you know, so that we remain right with mm. God. Mm. And it tells us things that are so relevant in mm. life, things mm. that, you know, are, are, are day to day. Amen. Uh, about marriage, mm. about parenting, about working. Wonderful. You know, about friendship, you know, and these are things that are in modern day society. And these are things that will remain yes. in society. Yes. yes. Yeah. Now, how, how do you help somebody who feels intimidated by the size of the book or mm. 66 books? Um, mm. And they're trying to find a way. To, how do I even start reading this? You know? Ah, that's great. Well, we'll answer some of those questions through the sermon. Great. But uh, the Bible is available in many formats. Yes. One, uh, it's on digital format. Yes, that's So right. you could just simply go and look for a Bible app. Mm -hmm. You can download it. It can be part of your applications. Mm -hmm. But then secondly, and, and this really grips my heart, is that uh, God, who is the perfect communicator, mm. wants to speak to us in a language that we understand. Yes. And so I have the duty of uh, perhaps making a choice of the various translations of the Bible that are there, okay. I can pick up and choose one translation that I can easily read. Mm -hmm. And and I tell you, it's so interesting. Mm. You know, the Bible is a very real book. It is. It doesn't hide stuff. Yeah, amen. Some of the things that you read in the Bible, you, you wonder. In fact, a lot of what we see on Hollywood mm. just comes from the Bible. Straight from the Word. So if Hollywood's reading the Bible... <laughs> How much more should we? Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to invite you to just look into the camera as we get ready to start the service. Yes. And just give our viewers one important thing that you'd like them to take away from today's message. Great. Well, the Bible is God's Word to us. It has benefit for us, uh, for our lives, in terms of our conduct, but also in terms of truth, in terms of our doctrine. The Bible tells us what's right in life. It tells us what's, what's not right in life with us. The Bible also tells us how to get right with God. And the Bible helps us to keep on track, to remain right with God. Uh, for me, that's the big thing as I just prepared this message. Mm. That's what gripped my heart. Amen. Yes. Thank you so much. Well, sit tight. You're going to be hearing it uh, directly from Reverend Isige in a few more moments right here on CBS Family Service. Thank you for joining us right over to our worship team. Come on, put your hands together. Wherever you're joining us this morning, we just want to give our God the highest praise. Hallelujah. He alone deserves all praise. Our God is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Woo. Every praise, 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 every praise
listening to this service on OPFM, those of you who are watching us on Op TV and on our Sitam Church online platform every Sunday at the same time. For today, our hashtag is His Word, My Life. I want us to engage online, get your friends together, let's tweet about this service, let us occupy the airwaves and all the online platforms for Jesus. And I just want us to carry on now with worship. And as we do that, let me ask you to disengage from everything that will hold you back because the anointing of God is here. Our worship team is ready to lead us into the throne room of God. I just want you to disengage your mind and let us get in to that time of worship. Worship team. Hallelujah. Oh, we give you all the praise. Oh, yeah. You have done great things, Lord. Let's 
a sacrifice of praise of the Lord. So we give you, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. You alone. So we give you all the glory. Give you all the praise. Give you all the glory. You alone. Give you all the glory. Give you all the praise. Give you all the glory.
We raise a hallelujah to the Lord, to Him who is worthy of all the worship and all the honor and all the adoration we raise. We raise a hallelujah to you. Holy you are holy. Yes, you only you are worthy. Hear me say.
you are high and exalted. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. And we are making a declaration, Yahweh. We are singing your name. We are shouting out to your name, saying, Thou art holy. Thou art Yahweh. We worship you today. We bless your holy name. As we worship, Lord, you are sorting our lives. Lord, as we worship, you are breaking every shackles. You are dealing with lives. You are healing, oh God. You are opening doors. You are doing the miraculous, oh God. You are moving. You are shifting seasons in the lives of your children. As we worship. And therefore, worship Him. You're going to help me one more time. We just make that declaration to Yahweh. Jesus. We declare that He is high and holy. Lift that is holy. Hallelujah. So we lift you Jesus, we worship and adore you. To live and to worship you is our desire. It's our joy that you would allow us into your presence this morning. Receive the worship. Receive the honor. It is all to you, Jesus. You deserve it all. With joyful hearts, we give it all to you, saying thank you, receive it, you deserve it. None compares to you. It is in Jesus' holy, righteous and precious name we have worship. Put your hands together, worship. Let's just adore the Lord and honor Him. Shout out to the Lord, shout out to Him, is King. Amen, 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 amen. Wow, what a great time in worship this morning. Many thanks to our worship team. Thank you for waiting at that place of prayer. You can tell they prepared, they put in all, they are all just to take us and usher us to the throne room of God. And we thank you so much, worship team. If this is your very first time with us on CPS, we would like to say welcome and feel right at home and feel at the throne room, at the presence of the Lord. We especially want to welcome our friends who are joining us from all over the world, but a special mention to those who are joining this broadcast from Sitam, Namibia, because we have a branch right in Namibia. We want to welcome those in America, Sitam, USA. We want to welcome those of us, our family in Romania. We want to welcome those in East Timor. We want to appreciate every last one of you. We are appreciate that you made time to join us in this Sunday today in this family service. We appreciate all the time that you take even to join us as a family. Thank you so very much. Keep staying with us. And in case you are new, I didn't even make mention of your country. I want you to know we love you. We appreciate you. Keep tweeting. Tell us where you're watching or following us from. And um, uh, I want to remind you that our hashtag for the day is, is what? My life. If you have not subscribed to us, our channels before, I'd like you to just do that right now. Go into that place and subscribe, and then you can click on the notification bell. Whenever the new content that comes up, 
you will be the first one to be notified of. Once again, our hashtag is His Word, My Life. Engage, get your friends together. Let's occupy all those platforms for Jesus. Let's make Him shine because He indeed is Yahweh and He deserves all of our worship. We have been privileged during this season of the pandemic to conduct ministry in various ways by the grace of God. And there are so many people we've been able to reach despite the disruption. Because of this sit-up uh, broadcast service, we've been able to continue uh, feeding and enriching uh, our congregants. And for that alone, we give God the glory. Now, we just want to give you more notices. You get to know more about Sitam, what we are up to, what we are about. And in just a minute, this clip will be playing. It will give you more information on who we are as Sitam. We are glad to extend a very warm welcome to everyone watching us on Hope TV, listening on Hope FM, and those of you streaming live on our Sitam Church online social media platforms. This is your Sitam Broadcast Service, CBS, leading you in worship and sharing the Word of God on air and online. Thank you for joining us for this Sunday morning family service. We are gathered on air and online from all over the world. God has something special for you as we worship Him together today. For our young people, we also have a special youth service live on Hope TV and on the Sitam YT Nation social media pages every Saturday from 1.30 p.m. The children have their Sunday school every Sunday at 8.30 a.m. for those aged 10 to 12 years at 9 a.m. for ages 5 and below and 9.30 a.m. for children 6 to 9 years. On Tuesdays, please join us on Hope TV, Hope FM, Facebook and YouTube at 5 p.m. for the After Sunday Live discussion where any questions you have about the subject of the sermon today will be addressed. We want to invite you and your family to also connect with us on Wednesdays for the live midweek prayer service from 6 p.m. broadcast on Hope TV and Hope FM and on the Sitam Church online social media platforms. Please send in your prayer requests before and during the service. Our pastors will be praying with you and for you. We want to thank all our safari groups for continuing to meet faithfully during this season. We expect safari group meetings to be virtual using social media platforms like WhatsApp or meeting by Zoom. However, if the necessary steps are taken to ensure that you abide by the Ministry of Health protocols, then in-person meetings can be held. If you are not in a safari group and you wish to join one, please send us a message on our WhatsApp numbers plus 254-784-277-277 Airtel and plus 254-728-221-221 Safaricom and we will guide you on how to join one in your area. Planning to get married? We urge all our members to contact your senior pastor for direction on the steps to be taken in preparation for your wedding. Our pastors will conduct weddings, keeping strictly to the Ministry of Health guidelines. Please contact your pastor in good time to make arrangements. We express our deepest condolences to all who may be bereaved in this season. We wish to inform you that our pastors will be available to conduct funeral services, allowing only 200 people to be present, and will also conduct the burial service on site. Please contact your respective senior pastor for guidance. All our Sitam Church offices are now open and also observing all Ministry of Health protocols. Thank you for staying connected to the Sitam Broadcast Service and thank you for paying attention to these notices. Please remember that all our assemblies are open for in-person worship services. However, if you wish to attend, you will have to register in advance to book a seat. You can do so by using the USSD code star 304 star 933 hash for Safaricom users and follow the instructions to receive a seat confirm for the service you chose to attend. If you are not a Safaricom user, you can use the church website www.sitam.org to register. God bless you. It's now that time that you'd like to bring various prayer requests to the Lord in prayer in a time of intercession. And I'd like to welcome uh, Elder Chiriot from Sitam Woodley. He will be taking us through that segment of intercession. Karibu sana, Elder. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Pastor Angela. Uh, good morning. Um, it's a precious time to, to intercede, to go before the Lord in prayer. 
And uh, as the word of God tells us, look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth, for I'm God and there's no other. Uh, the psalmist also uh, in um, Psalm 61 uh, says, Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth, I'll cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been a shelter uh, for me, a strong tower uh, from the enemy. God is our shelter and our strong tower. And indeed, you know, he will hear our prayers. I want to start with thanksgiving. Uh, yesterday, um, Saturday, 17th of October, we had a successful uh, ADC. That's an annual delegate conference for this ministry, uh, SITAM. And, uh, and we want to thank God for seeing us through. And, um, and also want to thank God for the ratification of the new uh, bishop designate, that's uh, Reverend Callisto Odede. So let's go before the Lord. Let's pray. Precious loving Father, we come before you this morning. Thank you, Heavenly Father, God Almighty, for gathering us and uh, Lord giving us this opportunity, Lord, to come before you in prayer and to speak to you as our Father. Thank you that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, who rose again. He is alive forevermore. And through him, we have the gift of life eternal. Lord, we praise and thank you for great things that you've done for us. I want to thank you, O God, for the successful annual delegate conference that, Lord, you gave us yesterday. We give you thanks, we give you praise, O God, for the unity of the Spirit you gave us, O God, as a ministry. And we thank you and praise you, Lord God Almighty, that among other things, Lord, that the new bishop-designate, uh, Reverend Callisto Data, was, um, was appointed. We thank you and we praise you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, God Almighty, for, uh, uh, for, for what you have done, O God. We give you thanks, we give you praise for the journey, O Lord, of appoint, appointing the new bishop. And Lord, we want to pray, O God, for the, uh, for the process of uh, handing over and, and the transition. We pray, Lord God Almighty, that, Lord, your hand will rest upon our bishop, uh, David Oginde, as he hands over and as he, and, and as he transits, O oh God, even from the, uh, from, from the office of the bishop, may you guide him, may you lead him, and be with him, Heavenly Father. We want to pray, O oh God, even for the, uh, for the consecration of the new bishop, uh, planned for the, uh, December 5th, O oh God, that Lord it shall go well in the name of Jesus. We give you thanks, we give you praise, and we bless your name. You are our Lord and you are our God. Blessed be your name. We also want to, uh, want to, so want to thank God, and also to pray for the transition. Um, last week, our bishop um, read a message from the Council of Elders uh, that we um, that that the Reverend Ken Isige will move from uh, Sitam uh, Thicker Road to uh, Sitam Woodley, and that um, and that Reverend, and that Reverend uh, Kennedy Kimiwe will move to uh, Valley Road uh, to meet, move to Thicker Road. We want to pray for them. Let's pray for this man. And also Deputy Bishop, uh, John Carita, will go to the headquarters. Let's pray that God will guide them as they settle in to uh, those uh, um, uh, into new areas and new, new, new churches. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to pray, O oh God, for your servants, O oh God. We want to commit them in your hands. We want to thank you, Heavenly Father, for the ministry of uh, Kenny Sige in Thicker Road. We pray, Heavenly Father, Lord Karuma, that he moves to uh, Sita Moodley that God, your presence, shall go with him. We want to pray for the congregation of God, that Lord Karma will be receptive. We pray, Lord Karma for good rapport with the local leadership of God in the name of Jesus. We pray also for Ken Kimiwe. As he comes uh, to Sitam Thicker Road, may you be with him, Heavenly Father. We pray, Lord Karma even for smooth transition of God in the name of Jesus. We commit even Bishop Karita, O Lord, as he takes a new role in the, in the head of his O God, to discharge his uh, uh, duties there. Be with him, Heavenly Father. We pray for your anointing. We pray for leadership. And we pray for your guidance, dear Father, in the name of Jesus. We praise you and we thank you. Glory, praise, and honor be unto your name. We also want to pray for um, the reopening of uh, schools. Uh, we know that uh, here in Kenya and maybe other countries that may be watching from, uh, that recently schools have started reopening. We want to pray uh, that uh, God will guide the administration of the schools and also Ministry of Education as they settle uh, our children in schools. Let's pray. Our Father, our Lord and our God, we want to praise and thank you. Thank you, Lord, even for the way you have led and guided this nation, O oh God, and many other nations, Lord, in handling the pandemic that arose. Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord, even for the children 
Some have been at home for a long time. Lord, as they go to school, especially the standard four and, and uh, standard eight, and also the form four. We pray, Heavenly Father, that God, your presence be with them, O oh God. We want to pray, Lord, for security. We pray, Lord, God, that it shall be well. We want to pray, Lord, for the school administration. Lord, as they handle these children, help them, O oh God, and give them wisdom and direction from you, Heavenly Father. We want to pray, O oh God, and Lord, for the Ministry of Education, as they handle other aspects of education, O oh God, the gradual reopening of schools and colleges, give them direction and give them guidance, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We praise you and we thank you. Blessed be your name. We also want to pray for our land. King of glory, we thank you and praise you, Heavenly Father, for this nation. Thank you, Heavenly Father, God Almighty, for your presence with us, O oh God. You have kept us, you have watched over us as a nation. And God, we want to pray, O oh God, for uh, peace, O oh God. We pray for law and order in this country in the name of Jesus. We want to pray, O oh God, Lord God Almighty, that Lord, as we come to you, have mercy upon our land, have mercy upon our country. Lord God Almighty, there's so much uh, iniquity that Lord has gone on this country. Father, we pray that God, you, you forgive us, forgive the sins of our land. And God, we pray in the name of Jesus that Lord, you will expose, oh God, you will shake, uproot what needs to be uprooted, oh God, and heal our land. You have seen even endemic corruption, oh Lord. You have seen, Lord God Almighty, bloodshed. You have seen, oh God, rape and such horrible things that have gone in this country. We ask you, Lord God Almighty, and cry to you, forgive the sins of our land. And heal us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And I want to pray, Lord God Almighty, for as many as Lord God Almighty, and tune today and go to houses of worship, that God, your hand will rest upon them. And that God, even as your word goes forth in this forum, O oh God, we pray that many shall come to the knowledge of the truth and shall know Jesus Christ, whom to know is eternal life. Hear us, O oh God. And we pray, Lord God Almighty, for peace and security. We want to pray, Lord, for our uniform from forces. Some, Lord God Almighty, who are in, uh, uh, who are uh, patrolling, O oh Lord, in our borders and our towns, our villages. God, we pray for them, Lord. We pray that, God, you help them, O oh God, that they may carry out their work, and that, God, you give us peace and security in this country, in the name of Jesus. Visit us, Heavenly Father. We pray, Lord, for restoration of businesses, O oh God, that had been shut down, and some that are yet to take off. God, we pray, Heavenly Father, that, Lord, you may help the citizens of this country, and, Lord, even visit us in this country, and you invest us, O oh God, and that, Lord, God, in this nation, Lord, there shall be uh, there shall be new investments and there shall be uh, peace and prosperity, Heavenly Father. We give you thanks and we give you praise. And thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer this morning. For this we pray, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, I'd like to invite uh, Pastor Angela uh, to take over again. Thank you. Thank you so much, our elder. The Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. You. Amen. We want to appreciate you for... Um, your faithful giving that has enabled us to continue as a ministry. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord open doors for you. It's that time that we get to just worship the Lord again with our givings, our tithes and our offerings. And there will be a clip right uh, uh, on the screen to give you instructions on how you're going to give. Before we do that, let's get to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you've given us everything that we have. And Lord, we appreciate that you've sustained us in every phase of life, oh God. Thank you for your providence of all the things that we own and that we are. We pray that as we give today, we are giving as a token of thank you to you. Bless those who are not able to give today and Lord provide for them that they'll be able to give next time. We bless you and we honor you. It's our prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. It is now time to express our worship to God through giving. Thank you for the continued support of God's work through SITEM. We believe that God who sees in secret will reward you openly and abundantly. We have established a common payment platform for all our giving, irrespective of which assembly you attend and even for our visitors. You can now give via mobile money through the following platforms. M-Pesa or Airtel Money, the pay bill number for either system is 933-934. I repeat, 
0800-242-934. For account name, please indicate the SITEM assembly you attend. If you have joined us in this service, but you are not a member of any SITEM assembly, just write offering in the account space. Please remember that all other SITEM pay bill numbers remain operational. If you would like to make a direct bank deposit, electronic transfer or PESA link, please use the following account. Account name, Christ is the Answer Ministries. Bank, Cooperative Bank, University Way Branch. Account number 011-280-617-639-00. I repeat, 011-280-617-639-00. Swift code. K-C-O-O-K-E-N-A. If you prefer to give through our website, kindly visit www.sitem.org. Click on the gift tab and follow the instruction for online giving. Once again, we want to appreciate your giving and continued prayers for the ministry. God bless you. Thank you for staying with us at Sitam Broadcast Service. We have been running a series this month of October titled Responding to God. And our sermon title for today is His Word, My Life. And you don't want to miss that sermon. Let's engage on that hashtag, His Word, My Life. Before we get to hear the Word of God, our worship team will give us a special song and then we get right into the Word. Beautiful words of David captured 
in song by our worship team. His word is a lamp unto my feet. And it speaks right to our hashtag for the day. Remember, his word, my life. Keep tweeting. Let's occupy the online space for Jesus. It's that time we get to hear the word of God. And it's my pleasure and joy to welcome our speaker for the day, who is Reverend Isige, uh, the Deputy Regional Overseer of the Northern Region. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Angie. You're welcome to share the word of God today with us. Amen. And I just pray for you and you get right into it. Thank Shall you. we pray? Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your servant that you've chosen to speak to us today. We pray that your anointing will be upon him, the unction to function, O oh God. We pray for clarity of mind, clarity of speech, and anointing as he delivers to the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' name we pray, trust, and believe. Amen. Karibu. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pastor Angie. And uh, I just want to thank God for this day and for the opportunity that is mine just to be able to connect with us through broadcast media, through social media. I thank God. It's always a pleasure to minister the Word of God to the people that He loves so dear. As you've been told, our topic for today and our hashtag for this day is His Word, My Life. And I just want to plug straight in as we proceed. Now, one of the most known verses in the Bible was penned by the Apostle Paul in his second letter to Timothy, his son. The popularity of this text is based on really just about two things. The first is that this particular verse uh, addresses the entire canon of Scripture from Genesis all the way to Revelation all 66 books. But the second reason that I think caused this verse to be known or popular amongst uh, many people is that this verse has raised debate as to whether the scripture is the word of God, the word of man, or a combination of the two. The scripture I'm referring to, of course, is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. But allow me to read it from verse 15 all the way to 17. This is what the Bible says. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. From childhood, you have known the sacred writings, which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped, for every good work. This is God's word. Now, without delving too much into the debate, it's important for us, that's for you and for me, to just take note of what verse 16 says. Verse 16 says that all scripture is inspired by God. So that whereas we know that the books of the Bible were written by men, all the words were inspired by God. The Apostle Peter explains it this way in 2 Peter chapter 1 from verse 20 following. He writes saying, But know this, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, but men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. Men, he says, moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. So, from this text, we can see that God superintended the human writers. He used their personalities, he used their experiences, and he used those, and he inspired them to write the words of the Scripture. So that the words of the Scripture, and indeed all Scripture, is inspired by God, or as some versions put it, all Scripture is God-breathed. Now, two key implications that arise from this truth. Number one is this, that the scripture is without error, has no error. And this is just a logical conclusion based on the fact that the all-knowing, the all-powerful God does not and cannot make mistakes. So the scriptures as inspired by God is without error. The second implication of this is this, that the scripture has both doctrinal and moral authority over us. By doctrinal authority, what I mean is this. That the scripture speaks truths. Truths from God. 
And by so doing, it has authority over you and I. But on top of that doctrinal authority, it also has moral authority over us. So with regard to the scripture, for you and for me, the crux of the matter is this. What is the place of the Bible in your life? Do you read the Bible? Where does the Bible fall in your list of priorities? What I'd like to do from the text that we've read and also from a number of other texts is just consider what the purpose of the scriptures are and align, alongside that, consider what our response to the scriptures ought to be. So we're going to look at the purpose and we're going to look at the response. We're going to bring these two together. And from the text, let me just say immediately from the onset, I see three appropriate responses to the functions of Scripture. Let me mention them, then we'll talk about them. The first one is that we are to accept the message of salvation. That's our first response. The second is that we are to abide in the walk of sanctification, and we'll talk about that. And last, but certainly not least, we are to apply ourselves to service. So accept the message of salvation, abide in the walk of sanctification, and thirdly, apply ourselves to service. Let's quickly talk about the first one, accepting the message of salvation. This I draw from verse 15 of 2 Timothy chapter 3. And the verse says, From childhood you have known the sacred writings, which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So that this verse tells us that the Bible gives us wisdom that leads to salvation, and that salvation comes through faith in Christ Jesus. So that knowing the Bible is a good thing, but knowing the Bible doesn't save you. Neither does the Bible itself save you. Going to church doesn't save you. Being a good person doesn't save you. Salvation is only by faith in Christ Jesus who died on the cross as a penalty for your sin and for my sin. So that nobody can earn their salvation. The Bible reveals this truth and several other truths. You see, it's in the Bible that we learn about the creation of man in the image of God. We learn about the fall of man. And by that fall came sin. And sin also came with a number of other things, pain and suffering and ultimately death, which is separation from God. But the Bible also reveals to us and speaks to us of the love of God, the love that God has for mankind despite man's disobedience. The Bible tells us of God's desire to dwell with man. The Bible tells us of the coming of Christ Jesus tells of the death of Christ on the cross at Calvary. And he died on the cross for your sin and my sin. The Bible tells us of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, proving that the sacrifice of Christ on the cross was acceptable before God so that all who put their faith in Christ Jesus indeed are saved from their sins because we believe that he died on the cross for my sin and for your sin. You see, none of these truths would be known except by God revealing it and God has revealed it in his word, the Bible. I want to ask you a question. Are you saved from the penalty of your sin? You see, for you and I, the appropriate response to the Bible, the word of God, is to accept the message of salvation. Jesus said these words, they're recorded in Matthew chapter 7 from verse 13 forward. It says, wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. But narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Jesus also said this in John chapter 14, verse 6. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. 
So I ask you now, have you found the way to salvation? What about your children? Have you guided your children to respond also to the written word of God and to guide them so that they also accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? This is what 2 Timothy chapter 3, 15 tells us that Timothy as a child from his childhood was guided by his parents and by such guiding, they guided him through the scriptures and through the scriptures, he attained the wisdom that led to his salvation, which came by his putting his faith in Christ Jesus. You and I are to respond to the scriptures, God's written word, firstly, by accepting the message of salvation. But secondly, we are to abide in the walk of sanctification. Now, I get this from verse 16. Verse 16 says this. It says, All scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. Now, the thing is this. Once you are saved, the next step is to walk in sanctification. Now, sanctification is not a very common word, but it comes from the word sanctify. And sanctify basically means to set apart or to make holy. So that sanctification is the progressive disconnection or the progressive disassociation of the believer from sin towards righteousness. The goal being Christ-likeness. So that's what sanctification is. It's like you're on a progressive journey. And on this journey, you're being disconnected or disassociated from sin. Now, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 identifies four benefits of the Bible towards the sanctification of you and I as believers. And these are the benefits. The first is teaching. The second is reproof. The third is correcting. The fourth is training in righteousness. And I love the way one Bible commentator puts it. This is the way he puts it. He says, the scripture is profitable for teaching, teaching which is related to doctrine, which is truth. So that the scripture is profitable for teaching us what's right. Okay? Secondly, for reproof or rebuking. And that has to do with what's not right. Thirdly, the scripture is profitable for correcting. And that's how to get right. And fourthly, the scripture is profitable for you and I for training or instructing in righteousness, which is how to remain right. So four things. The scripture is profitable for you and I to tell us what's right, what's not right, how to get right, how to remain right for simple things. Let me make some quick comments on each of these. Now, with regard to what's right, or teaching, or doctrine. The Bible is a well of truth for all of us so that the Bible reveals to us all that is necessary for you and I to live as God desires. You see, the Bible tells us about God and how He exists in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us about man, about sin, about salvation. The Bible tells us about the future of this world the Bible tells us about heaven, about hell. The Bible tells us about Satan. The Bible tells us about church, about worship, about how to live as a Christian. The Bible tells us about what to do, about what not to do. So that without the Bible, we'd never have known who we are, where we came from, what we're doing here, and where we're going. The Bible is profitable for you and for I with regard to the matter of what's right so that everything we need to know to find meaning in life is written in the scriptures and we are to use that the bible the scriptures for that purpose secondly the scripture is preferable to tell us what's not right that's rebuking notice that the move from doctrine and teaching to rebuking is a move from what we believe, or what is right, what is truth, to our conduct, what we do. 
so that the scripture exposes both our doctrinal error but also our moral error. The scripture reveals our sin and our foolishness, the things that we do wrong in our lives. And thirdly, the scripture is profitable for correcting so that once the Bible or the scripture reveals our sin, what is not right, it doesn't leave us in that state of sin. You see, correcting has to do with restoration, restoring something to its original form so that the scripture doesn't leave us in sin or in error. The scripture indeed corrects us and restores us to the place where God desires that we should be. It shows us how to get to the right place with God. But the scripture, fourthly, is also profitable for training or instruction in righteousness, which is how to remain right. So that once we are corrected by the scripture, the scripture encourages us on how we can remain on track, on how we can stay on the right path and avoid making mistakes. See, I like to think of it in this way. I've got a phone, a smartphone, just like many of you have. And it has many functions, a number of great applications. And I really appreciate it. I can send and receive money on my phone. I can send messages and receive messages. You know, it's really a handy tool. But one of the apps that for me is most valuable is a mapping application. I know you probably have it on your phones. And I use this mapping application in this way. You see, sometimes I want to get to a certain place. Uh, a place that perhaps I've never been before. And what I do, I click onto the mapping application and then I, I type in the name of the place. I've never been there, but I know the name of the place. So I type in the name of the place. And once I type it in and hit the button, what happens is the phone opens a map and shows me the directions to get to that place. Now, once I click the start button, the phone immediately speaks to me and starts telling me the direction that I ought to go. And as I start moving, it keeps on talking to me, speaking to me. And so you'll hear it saying things like, uh, remain on this road for the next two kilometers, you know? And then it will say things like, at the next roundabout in 200 meters, take the third exit, you know? So that as I'm moving towards that place, the phone speaks to me, encourages me, stay on track, you're on the right track, turn right, turn left. Now, sometimes, as happens in life, I make a wrong turn. And the amazing thing is this. Once I make that wrong turn, as I look at my phone, I see it recalibrating. And what it does in a short while, it directs me back to the path where I ought to be so that I can get back to the place or the path of my destination. That's exactly what the Bible is to be for you and for me. But that can only happen if you engage the scripture. Because you see, you and I, we're on a journey. And we're a journey to God's place of promise, both in this life and in the life to come. So that the daily engagement of the scriptures encourages me that I'm on the right path. The daily engagement of scriptures helps me to know when I go off on the wrong path and when I'm on that wrong path, it speaks to me and shows me the way back to the right path. An amazing application. Another way that I use this mapping app is this. And I'll just give a practical example from a real life story. Not too long ago, members of our church, a couple that got married, my wife and I had the privilege of mentoring them. They moved from where they were living to a different location, a place that I didn't know. And uh, I was going to visit them. And so what they did is this, that they sent me a pin. You know, from their house, they sent me a pin of the location of where they are. And once I received that pin, I clicked on it. And it did exactly the same thing. It showed me a map guiding me to their place. 
And I followed that map and it took me exactly to their gate. This here is like God's pin sent to you and to me to guide us in life so that we don't veer off, so that we find our direction, so that we get to the place of God's promise in this life and in the life to come. And there are several things or places of promise that are in this life. For you who wants to get married, get married, this word of God will guide you on where and how to get married. If you want to, you've got married and you've gotten children and you want to raise them in the right way, use God's pin. It will let you know what to do in order to get there. The Bible is important for you and for me. But it'll only be important for us if we read it, if we engage it. And I want to encourage you to read and to engage this word of God. Allow me to just share some tips towards you committing yourself to reading and studying the Bible so that you're guided by God's word in your life. Number one, very key, important thing for you to do is you need to have a Bible that's in a language that you can understand. There are so many different translations of the Bible in different languages, but one thing that would help you is select a Bible that's in a language that you can understand. That will encourage you. Uh, you know, I grew up at a time when the most popular Bible was the King James Bible. And so for a long time, I used to think that God speaks in sentences like, whither thou goest, or thou hast said. That's how I used to think God speaks. And I used to struggle with that language. But as I grew in faith, I came to know that indeed, God speaks to you and to me. He speaks to us in languages that he, or rather that we understand. And for me, that's an expression of God's love. He loves you so much. He loves me so much that he reveals his words to me in a language that I can understand. And these translations there, there are some of them you could download on an app. And the benefit of downloading it on, on an app is that There'll be several different versions and you can sample and read. But the important thing is select a version that you easily connect with, one that you can easily understand as you read. Choose a Bible in a language that you can understand. Secondly, it's important for you to be systematic, to be consistent with regard to when you read the Bible and the approach you take when reading the Bible. So select a regular time, you know? Think about your day and tell yourself, at this time, I'll set aside time to read the Bible. Like for instance, for me, most of the time, I'll read the Bible late at night when you know it's quiet and there's nobody else awake. That's when I'll engage myself just to read the Bible or early in the morning when I'm nice and fresh. Of course, there are other times in the course of the day that I take time to study. But I have set evening and morning as times for me to read the Bible. Also, choose a place where you can just be aside from any other distraction and close yourself in for some time to read the scripture. Thirdly, there are different methods that you can engage in reading the Bible. Like one, you can just read it through from cover to cover. Deuteronomy chapters 8 verse 3 says this, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And Jesus Christ repeated that same verse in Matthew chapter 4 verse 4. Two things we get from this text. One is that the Bible is as important for your spiritual nourishment as food is important for your body. So that if you're not reading the scripture, then you might be spiritually malnourished. You need to read the scripture and listen to what Jesus says, or rather what the scripture says, Deuteronomy 8, 4, 4, 8 verse 3. It says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, which means God expects you to read every word in the Bible. 
every word is important for you. And he says, every word that comes or that proceeds from the mouth of God. In other words, every word that is inspired of God, all scripture is God breathed. That's what God expects for you and for me. Have you read the Bible from cover to cover? I want to encourage you to take time and just sit, map out a plan on how you can read the Bible from cover to cover. Secondly, memorization. You need to memorize the Bible. And there are several verses that talk about memorization. There's the command in, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6, where Moses speaks to the children of Israel and he tells them, these commands that I give you today are to be upon your heart. Psalm 119 verse 11 also says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So that one way to connect is for you to memorize the Bible so that it's part of your life, so that it's in your heart. Let me tell you one thing that I do. As I'm reading the Bible through, sometimes I come across a verse that just jumps out at me. And in order to help me to memorize that verse or connect with it, I use the reference to that verse as passwords, either for my phone or maybe for my email, you know, so that every time that I'm keying in a password to get into my phone or to get into the email, what am I doing? I'm typing in a scripture, memory verse. That's what I'm doing. And I think this is consistent with Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 9, where Moses again, speaking to the children of Israel, tells them, write down these commands on the door frames of your house and on your gates. You see, I take it that the password is like a gate. So when I put that down as a password, it helps me to get in. Thirdly, we need to meditate on the scripture, meaning that we need to mull over the scripture. And Psalm chapter 1, the, not Psalm chapter 1, but the first Psalm talks about the benefits of meditating on the, on the, on the word day and night. We also could study the scripture, which means we take some time and we do an in-depth study, you know, carefully analyzing it word by word and analyzing the context and so many other things because this is beneficial for our lives. Let me give you a third tip, just about two more tips. Third tip is that you could use a tool to enhance your understanding or application of the Bible. There's the tool S P. E-C-K. It's an acronym. SPEC. And SPEC is an acronym, acronym for, as you're reading the Bible, the S stands for sin in terms of as you're reading, is there a sin to confess as you read through the scripture? The P stands for promise. Is there a promise to claim? The E stands for example. Is there an example for you to follow? The C is for the command. Is there a command for you to obey? And K is Knowledge about God. Is there something new that you've read about God in the scripture? So you could use an acronym like that. And each time you're reading it, you're just looking out for, is there a sin that I can confess? Is there a promise that I can claim? Is there an example for me to follow? Is there a command to obey? Is there some knowledge about God that has come to me as I read? Fourthly, we are also to talk about the scriptures. And this is in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7. It says, talk about it on the road, so that when we talk about it, it becomes part of our lives. And let me give you just a hint of what to talk about when you're talking about the Bible. Talk about some of the things that you've observed as you're reading. Just talk about what you've saw. Talk about also what you understood by what you are reading. Then you can talk to somebody about how you're applying that in your life. What you observe, what you interpret, how you're applying it in your life. Fifthly, to encourage you with regard to reading and committing yourself to the Bible, you could join a Bible study and commit yourself to attend. And right now, during this season, there are so many different online uh, Bible studies that have been established so that from wherever you are, you could just hook up and connect with the Scripture. So, so far, we've noted two responses to the Scripture. That is, where to accept the message of salvation, and secondly, we are to abide, abide in the walk of sanctification. The third response is this. 
we are to apply ourselves to service. And this I get from verse 17, that verse 17 says this, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. You see, the Bible prepares us for works of service to God, to church, and to society. You see, you and I, we are not in and of ourselves qualified for good works. But as we read the scripture, the Bible qualifies us. It makes us proficient. It makes us adequate for those good works. You see, in and of ourselves, we are not naturally good fathers or good husbands or good wives or good leaders or good workers, whatever it is. But the scripture, as we read it, it sharpens us and helps us to be better Christians. I want to encourage you to read the Bible, to read the scripture. Let me end with a simple testimony just before I pray for you. I've had the benefit of growing up in this church from my infancy. My parents, from the time I was born, took my eye and my siblings. We all came right here to this church. And I thank God for, indeed, that was a blessing. I came to love the church. As I grew up, I gave my life right here in this church. And uh, I came to love Bible study. And I would love the sermons from the great men of God, the preachers that were well, the pastors right here in this church. But I remember one particular Sunday. This was when I was somewhere in my 20s. And I remember a pastor preaching. And uh, as he preached, he gave a testimony of how he had gone to a hospital, one of the hospitals that are just around near the church. He was a pastor in charge of pastoral care. So he went to this hospital and he met this man who was on his deathbed. Now, he spoke to the man, he encouraged him and he guided the man. The man gave his life to Christ right there on his deathbed. Praise God. But then the pastor continued and said that a couple of weeks later, he went to visit this same hospital and he found the man right there. But this time the man was so dejected, was so discouraged. And the pastor engaged him and asked him, why are you so low? Why are you so down? And the man said this. He said, uh, pastor, I'm so glad, you know, I've given my life to Christ. Um, but the challenge that I'm facing is this, that if I died right now, I know I'd go to heaven, but I'd have nothing to show for all that Christ has done for me. Nothing to show for all that Christ has done for me. And when I heard that, that hit me like a thunderbolt. Because I had the benefit of having the scripture, of reading the Bible, of being sharpened, but I was doing nothing for the Lord. It's like you parents, when you send your children to school, you buy them the books, you pay the fees. Some of you even give them some pocket money, some allowance. But imagine your son or your daughter comes home with a report card at the end of the semester or the end of the term. And it's just a dismal result. Your son never attends class. The best that they've done is an F minus. How would you feel? That's exactly how I felt. And what I did, I committed myself to read the scripture, to get to know what gift the Lord has placed in my life. And having known, I engaged myself in works of service. I want to encourage you today. If you're a believer and the Bible is not a priority in your life, you're going to get lost along the way. You're going to get hurt in so many different ways. It's like having the mobile app to guide you to a particular place. But as it speaks to you and tries to guide you on the route, you ignore it and keep on going the wrong place. Listen to God's word. Read it, study it, meditate on it. Allow God's word to show you what's right, what's not right, how to get right, how to remain right with God. At this point, I just want to make a prayer for you. 
Maybe you're listening to me and you've never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And you recognize today that you've been wandering out there lost. But you want to come back home. Why don't you just say this prayer after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word today. I thank you that you died on the cross to pay the penalty of my sin. I say that I'm sorry for all my sins. Please forgive me and accept me as your child. And help me to live for you for the rest of the days of my life. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you said that prayer, then you're a child of God. Get in touch with us. Our numbers will be right at the screen, right at the bottom right here. Get in touch with us. Let us know that you made the decision for Christ and then we'll be able to guide you on the next step as we move forward. Praise God. At this point, I just want to welcome Pastor Angie back uh, so that she can guide us on what to do as we proceed. Thank Amen. you, Pastor. Wow. What a rich sermon. This is one of those sermons you just want to pause and reflect. One of my take-homes are a real, it's so rich that I just have to stay, you know, away and just unpack, is when you say that, and it's really from the Word of God, that the Word of God has both doctrinal and moral implication. Mm. Sometimes we dwell so much on the other, and that is where we lose out on allowing the Word of God to affect or affect the whole of our lives, exactly. the whole of our decisions, every single, as in, it's so real that every detail of our life, every day, the word of God has something to say, be it you're wanting to go to school, you're trusting God for a job, what to do as a family, the word of God speaks right to that. And that is really so true and so, so rich just to just chew on it. I just want you to say one thing about, in one of our um, online classes for the yes. new believers, one of the questions that keep coming up is um, there are some books that were omitted from the Bible. And you know, sometimes young believers spend so much time thinking, maybe there's one book that was left out, there's this. But yet you said, if the word of God is going to be effective in our lives, mm -hmm. we have to accept, mm -hmm. you know, accept the whole of it and accept in the sense that even the men who wrote these words were inspired by God. So behind every of the writing and every of the text of scripture is God himself. What do you say to such? Well, according to the text that we read, yes, it says that all scripture is inspired. Yeah. So that it's the words that are expired. What happened is that God used the human authors he used their personalities, their experiences, so that the words they wrote were the words of God. The question you're asking is a great question. Yeah. Um, there's no short answer to that question. But uh, this coming Tuesday, we can sit down and talk about these books that are in the Bible. How did they get to be in the Bible? Yeah. Is there any word book that is inspired that was left out? No, there is none. Is there any book that is not inspired that found its way into the Bible? No, there is not. And there's a very clear criteria to help us appreciate how the Bible we have today is actually the inspired word of God. Wow. Amen. Once again, thank you so much. May the Lord refresh you just the way you have refreshed us. Amen. It's been an amazing. The Lord bless you so much. Thank you. You will agree with me that that is a very rich sermon. And I pray that for you who has been following that you will have just one take home that you will apply to life. Remember, we have learned today that the word of God is not just for the knowledge purpose or the head knowledge. It should affect every single detail of our lives. Keep tweeting. Keep engaging us online. Give us your feedback. We'd like to know how this someone, you know, has spoken to any area of your life. It will be really a joy. Remember also to forward this uh, someone uh, uh, to your friend or family member, in case you know someone who didn't get to watch or follow, kindly share this. As he rightly said when I asked him that question, this coming Tuesday, it will be right on set on our Sitam Church online platforms, on Facebook, answering every of your question and actually clarifying uh, that question that has been asked by so many people, not just young believers alone. 
Are there books of the Bible that were left out that were inspired by God? You do not want to miss that on Tuesday. And on Wednesday, we have a prayer service just lined up for you. Come, let's pray together. You can send in your prayer request. We will be able to just pray with you and just believe God with you for whatever. I want to speak to the new believers. In case as you prayed, you prayed that prayer and you're wondering, where do I go from here? I want to just uh, let you know we have a new believers class. Yes, online. And there is a number right on your screen. You can send your name. There will be a team that is dedicated. They will call you back and give you a plan on how we will be able to engage as we finish a, a class that is already ongoing. We'll take you to that class. You will ask your questions. You will get someone to pray with. We will follow you through. And there's been amazing testimonies that have come through even in our online uh, class for the new believers. It's been a joy. It's been my pleasure to just host you today. And I just thank God that indeed in this season, God is speaking what I would call it is enriching us in discipleship so that even as we face the pandemic or all the issues of life, the word of God as something and an answer to every question that we would ask. And that's it for me. It's been a joy to host you for this service. Let's keep engaging online. Remember, if you've not subscribed before, you can subscribe to our online channels and you can get amazing content even to carry you for the rest of the week. Let me now welcome our Reverend Kwame to just come and give us the closing prayer. Thank you. Karibu Thank you. sana. Thanks, Pastor Andrew. You did a wonderful job moderating today. All Thank glory you. goes to God. Amen. It's a joy to serve him in that manner. Wonderful. What was your take home from the sermon? It was such a rich message, a great reminder, but I really like the acronym SPEC. Uh, makes it very, very easy to approach the Word of God in, in a non-intimidating way. Yeah. Uh, is, there, is there a sin that I need to confess? Is there a promise that I can make mine, etc.? And just to really search the Scriptures in that way. It was yeah. really, really good. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Can close the Thank you so much. God bless you. We're delighted that you joined us, and we know that God is going to use His Word, His uh, Scriptures whether you have it in the physical printed form or in a digital capacity on our phones, as many of us do. I pray that you will have taken all of the practical suggestions and ideas that our dear friend, Reverend Isiga shared today and make them a part of your life. Well, let's share together a benediction. I just want to take it from a verse in scripture. And this is from Psalm 119, the longest Psalm in the book of Psalms. In fact, the longest chapter in the Bible and it is all about the Word of God. Verse 7 says these words, May your word, uh, which is hidden in my heart, or I have, your word I have hidden in my heart, that I may not sin against you. Father God, we are grateful for your presence and for your direction and instruction to us today. May the blessing of your word and promises continue to abide with us throughout this week to come. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us on CBS today. Thank you very much. You are the savior with the spiritual touch. And now we want to thank our safari groups that have continued meeting consistently through various digital platforms, many for the very first time. Special thanks to those safari groups across the country that have reached out on their own initiative to support those in need around them. Jesus said, whatever you have done to the list of this, you have done to me. May God continue to bless you and your family and may he shower you with the richest blessings to the glory and honor of his holy name. Amen.